TV, Building Bridges. Mahere, um, just to say that uh, there's no main address to be made by myself, but just to appreciate members of the press for attending at such a short notice. We had no intention to have this press conference. As you are aware, this afternoon I voted in Kwazana. Uh, I was so humbled. The level of support from the people uh, is overwhelming, but also humbling. But what is disturbing to us is that um, we had hoped that we would have a normal election. The election has not been normal. I think the chief election agent has already indicated to you what our complaints and concerns are. In fact, I'm sure they told you that they approached ZEC, but ZEC seems to be either weak, incapable, or out of capacity to deal with the issues that are supposed to be dealt with. Uh, because those issues that were raised have not been addressed by ZEC, uh, and it's a cause for concern. Uh, ZEC seems to have confirmed our fears that they will probably fail to pass the credibility test, the professionalism test, the independence test, and the constitutionality test. Uh, and more importantly, the non-partisan ship test. Because we don't expect uh, ZEC to pitch camp with any side of the fighting or competing sides in this election. The fact that they've targeted Harare, the fact that they've targeted Bulawayo is an indication that they are scared of people in the urban areas. They are scared of citizens in the urban areas. And if you look at the number of voters in Harare, you are talking of over 1.2 million registered voters who, in the main, have been disenfranchised. This is a clear case of voter suppression, a classic case of Stone Edge, antiquated, analog rigging, where you say, find an excuse to say, we have all the other ballots. The presidential ballot is there. The parliamentary ballot is there. But you don't have the council candidates' ballots. This is in Harare, where the ballots are being printed. But you have ballots for Uzumba, for Muzi, for Mtoko, where there's no printing press that prints ballots. It tells you that you need to smell <coughs> a big red in terms of the approach of ZEC. And ZEC is not alone. It is endless. And it is those endless who are afraid of the imminent verdict of the people. That verdict is being contaminated, adulterated, because the people have spoken. Across the country, people are clear that they want change and they support us. I mean, you can see that ZANU-PF are very desperate. They are rattled. They did not start today. They did it with the issue of uh, the nomination. They did it even before the nomination, the gerrymandering in terms of the boundaries. They did it even with double candidates, connivance to impose double candidates on the triple C. What they tried to do in Mlawai when they intended to withdraw and remove our 12 members of parliament. And now what you are seeing is an escalation of those antics and tactics. Tactics of desperation, tactics that are deliberate, that are shameless, and tactics that are done by people who are in trouble. They have no mandate to govern this country. So they've plunged this country into a crisis. Starting from tomorrow, there's no government in Zimbabwe. Mr. Mnangagwa can claim, but he's not the president of this country, legally and constitutionally. So the country is being driven into a crisis, a constitutional crisis, a political crisis, and an electoral crisis. But we've said, and I must thank the citizens for soldiering on. They are still in the queues. And we are encouraging all the citizens, wherever you are, if you have not cast your vote, make sure you cast your vote. Your vote must count. They don't want your vote to count. They want to discount your vote, particularly in Arari, in Mulawayo, and in Manikaland. But there's a formula to the madness. Mr. Mnangagwa and zanu -Pierre, they know that they have no support in these provinces. And that's why they victimized the provinces, targeted them. But by doing so, they are also nullifying the effect of a credible election. And I'm glad as I welcome His Excellency, President 
uh, good luck, Jonathan, who is here on behalf of the AU, uh, just to observe and hear what our <coughs> concerns are. We have invited all the observer groups. That is the norm, that is the standard, and I'm glad that they are taking note of our very well considered uh, concerns. So yes, my message to Zimbabwe, we are receiving reports from across the country. What is shocking and surprising is that in the rural areas, it was not a vote. They were commandeering people, but our people were very vigilant. They had this thing that they called the poor exit poll survey, which is unheard of. Even in banana republics, they don't do such things. But Mr. Mnangagwa has called the first. In this one, he has defeated Mugabe in all his weaknesses and mistakes. He has gone a, a notch higher. And we are not going to accept that nonsense. People's vote must count. The citizens' vote must count. The voice of the citizens must count. So yes, we are going to take our opportunity overnight to receive reports, to assess the situation in the country, and inform the country on the direction we are going to take. We are not going to allow Mr. Mnangagwa to try and repeat a 2018 on the citizens of Zimbabwe. So my message to Zimbabwe is to encourage Zimbabweans to stay on course, to be vigilant, to wherever you are. I know that some of you are sick, you have ailments, but this is the last hurdle. If you have waited for 43 years, what's, what's so special about the night? Endure. We are going to enjoy. We are going to celebrate. There is going to be the people's will and the citizens' will in this country. And I've always said, God is in it. God's way and God's will shall be fulfilled. And there's going to be celebration in this country because the people want change. The people want a new government and a new leader. I want to thank you. So I'll take any questions, if any questions. Uh, thanking our teams who are doing a fantastic job to receive reports on what is happening across the whole country. I thank you. Yes. May you amplify your voice, my brother? It's not a question. Yes. That's right. In fact, thank you for raising that. That's our concern. By making sure that people don't vote in time, they are trying to create an opportunity for criminal conduct, for cheating and chicanery, for amplifying the vote in the urban areas by importing people from the rural areas. We understand that they didn't have enough buses and transport and enough time to move people from the rural areas into the urban areas. I suppose that's the reason why we can only conjecture because we asked for the explanation and reasoning from, from um, Z, they can't give a reason. Because ZANU-PF do not indicate the reason why they are doing that. By, by having night activities, you are actually undermining the security and credibility of the vote. You are actually rendering the vote vulnerable to machinations, to forces, dark forces that operate at night. And that is our biggest problem for the Harare vote and even the rural vote. We're supposed to be counting now, but now people are still talking of voting. And we're also hearing reports that they want to close the polling stations at 7, even for those that started at 4. That would be scandalous, illegal, and unacceptable. But we are going to be assessing the situation. We don't want to put the cut before the horse. We will take every situation as, the, as it comes. But I want to tell you that the people have been fantastic in their support. And we are urging and encouraging Zimbabweans to make sure that they are around the polling stations within the limits of the law to secure the polling stations and their vote, for their vote to count. But that vote is already contaminated. And we have to make sure that we give you know, effect to the will and sacrifice of the people. Um, I'm a little bit of a I'm from Syria. So I wanted to find out what is your plan to address these anomalies that you have had. Well, the plan is coming. Uh, once we have received a full report, we will be able to tell the nation and the world the direction. That's why we have invited observers, so that they also appreciate our, our, our position. What shocks us is that we are the only party that is complaining. ZANU-PF are not complaining because they are happy with the arrangement. They've done this thing in connivance with Zeki, and it's a serious issue. They are trying to undermine the will of the people, but they will not succeed. We will not accept 
any kind of skullduggery, any kind of tomfoolery, any kind of funny nonsense that they're trying to do. We are the people, we are the citizens. Enough is enough. We can't allow a repeat of 2018, or else we'll have to take some very serious measures that have to advance peace in this country and stability. The sanctity of the sacrifice of the people is important to be respected. The people are committed. The people want their votes to count. I have no power to nullify or discredit or discount that vote and that voice until we have done consultations with those people who voted. When somebody spends a whole day in the queue and you just wake up and say, to hell with that, we can't do that. We must respect the dignity of that vote. We must respect the sacrifice of the elderly, of the young, of people who are even not feeling well, sick people. We have been in the queues for their voice to count in governance. You know, we are peacemakers. We would want to give peace a chance and democracy a chance. But there's a line in the sand that has to be drawn. So in terms of the credibility, you can see that Mr. Mnangagwa was planning all along to nullify the credibility of this vote. It is up to him to justify to the world and to the people of Zimbabwe why he wants to continue on this path of illegitimacy. But as for us, we will not allow him because we can't allow this country to be ruled or governed by people who do not have the mandate of the city. Well, the first crime <coughs> on the part of Zek is their culpability and complicity in allowing FAS to be an extension of Zek processes. FAS is not supposed to be anywhere near Zek processes and Zek activities. But you, they have contaminated and polluted these processes by inviting a shadowy, spooky, ghosty organization that is not known at law to come and interfere, poison and discredit the election. But this is not the first time FAS is doing funny things. They did it in the internal ZANU-PF elections. And a lot of manipulations were done. You know, it's common cause. They have repeated this to then now escalate their you know, stubbornness to a national election. We will not accept that. But of course, ZANU-PF is so desperate. I have told you a catalog of their desperate acts. These are the last kicks of a dying horse. They are history. They are the past. <laughs> they are clinging on to power. But the people have shown them the red, the, red, the red card. And this is why they have the audacity to lie. Pedo falsehoods. Mr. Chamisa has said, I will not participate in the election uh, because it's rigged. Because that is what they wanted us to do, to boycott the election, so that they will then play the game with their own quizlings. But we've said, look, we are going to make you toe to toe to the last man. And we've done so. We ran a fantastic campaign. We ran a fantastic uh, mobilization. People support us. People are with us. All the four corners of the country. We are the only national party. ZANU-PF is not a party. It's a mafia gang. That's why you see terror and everything that they are doing. And we are conscious of what they are doing, especially as they print. Them. We even know where they printed those flyers. We have two companies where they were printing the flyers. FAS taking a key role, ZANU PF playing a key role. That's their tactics. Selu scout tactics, Rhodesian tactics. They have learned well from Smith, and they continue that path on colonialism. We will stop them. The people shall govern, and the citizens shall govern. And uh, besides the communication with uh, Smith from Zik, 
Has the party laid back? And uh, if not, uh, or if you have, what has been the response? We have engaged Zek to a point of nausea and to, to a point of actually being a nuisance. We, 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 we had our election agent engaging Zek, our election department and bureau engaging Zek. Like we told you, Zek are also, uh, their hands seem to be tight. They don't have capacity to even tell you of what's happening. They, they held a press conference in the afternoon to say that uh, I think the chief election. <laughs> Oh, it was fake. Well, I, I don't know, but uh, there's, in fact, it's even scandalous. They've not communicated uh, with the people. So we don't even know what the position is. All we are just hearing is that uh, uh, ballots are going to come. People went to the ballot, the highest turnover ever, at 4 a.m. Up to this hour, they're still in the queue. What level of disrespect? What level of abuse? No respect, no apology, no special emergence, extraordinary uh, address to say this is the situation. It must be corrected, and this is how it's going to be corrected. People have to go to work. People have to plan their lives. How do they plan their lives? They have not exercised their mandate and their critical vote. This day was a holiday. What about tomorrow? They, how do they make sure that they pursue or they follow national processes? So it's a big issue uh, that we have particularly from Zed, we've engaged them. We continue to engage them, but we're not happy with the response we are getting from Zed. I'll take three last one. One, two, three. My brother, my brother, I'm followed by people who follow me because they trust me. If you doubt me, that's okay. But those who trust us know what we are saying and they'll follow us. Thank you. I'm sure the chief election agent highlighted, thank you, Excellency, highlighted that in Muzaraban, the member of parliament in Zaraban was attacked. There's a police report. And many other areas where we have had, I think, Mazowe, across the whole country. And, and I think that is the emphasis that was made. And there are reports that have been made. It's official. This is not conjecture. You know? And people have been terrorized in the rural areas. You know, those uh, uh, poor exit poll stations, exit poll stations are, are terror stations. Because you are being asked to come there, register, and they want to know whom we have voted for, you go back. That's rubbish. It doesn't happen in any civilized you know, jurisdiction. And that we have to fight. I identified the last one. Yes. Otherwise, we are going to spend the whole night here. I'm sure you need to go to other you know, um, places, and I respect your, your indulgence. My brother, let's not cross you know, uh, the bridge that has not uh, been gotten to. The issue at the moment is a credible election. We can't talk of a GNU under these circumstances. A GNU to do what? To cheat people. A GNU to deceive people. The people have voted, and their vote must count. They must choose a leader of their choice. Not this thing by Mr. Monangago of wanting to come through the back door. In fact, he has not come through the back door. He wants to just come without even the door just jumping over. We will not allow that. He knows that he doesn't have the support of the people, but he wants to reproduce himself. Almost what we were fighting against under Mugabe is now a, a Mugabe dams too. Maybe, you know, young people, you say, Mark II, Mugabe. We don't want Mnangagwa to be in that kind of a thing. Let us respect the will of the people. When the people have decided, let's respect their decision. That is our plea, and that is our, our request.
My brother, I will say last okay. and very last, then we're done. Thank you. That's you know, I'm just trying to democratize, you know. You uh, seem to be very sure about the outcome and uh, how safe the situation is. Do you have some alternative uh, suggestions on how we are going to deal with this <coughs> situation according to how we are clearly expressed yourself? Thank you, sir. I, I think this is what Colisa was trying to say. But let's wait for, and I said it. Let's wait for a, a preliminary report, a com comprehensive report even, then we'll come to you and give a way forward. Don't doubt us. <coughs> you know, If you want to understand our weight and our salt, ask Zanubia. Look at the investment that they're putting into fighting us. The resources will tell you that we are no meek mouse. You know? Nobody deploys this kind of force against weak people. They know our true weight. And they know that we mean business. Fortunately, we mean business in peace. That's why they can't fight us. Because we can't fight and defeat a peaceful man. We carry the embodiment and wish of the people of Zimbabwe. And that's why people trust. And that's why people vote for us. And that's why people believe in us. And that's why when we say go and register to vote, they register to vote. When we say now, please make sure that you are participating in vote, they will participate. Well, the Zek fiasco is legendary. It's encyclopedic. I can't even start to talk about Zek and these failures. I'm sure they are better, you know, uh, position to comment on that. I'm actually shocked. I heard that in Chikanga, they don't have ballots for the president, uh, and in other areas, it's for the local authorities. But it's deliberate to cause confusion so that they mud the waters. You know, a catfish thrives in muddied waters. You know why? Because those antics and tactics become easier. But we will not allow them to distort the will of the people and to run away from the will of the people. Fellow members of the press, thank you for your indulgence. We appreciate your time. And may God bless you. We can assure you that the will of the people of Zimbabwe and the people of Zimbabwe out there, go and continue to defend your vote. Don't retire to bed before you have cast your vote in those areas where you have not cast your vote. <coughs> we will come to you on the way forward, but we want the vote to count, and we want this election to have a meaning in the lives of the people of Zimbabwe as we usher you in a new leadership and a new governance. I thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Good night. TV, Building Bridges.